It'll never happen again. All right, it's tournament time, and uh, we will uh, we'll travel down to Indy uh, tomorrow and um, uh, get down there. We'll practice do all our practice in here. We'll get down there with a noon uh, tip off. It's it's so much better than playing that late game and waiting all day. So we're uh, we've had a, a we took Sunday off. Had a little practice yesterday. Uh, Going to go really hard today for two hours, and then be light tomorrow, so that we're we're as fresh as we can be. Uh, Northwestern has obviously has great challenges for us. Uh, the last three times we've played them, if it didn't go down to the last second, it went down certainly to the last minute. Uh, they led most of the game here last year, or, last, or a couple weeks ago rather. So we got a, we got our work cut out for us, and uh, I'm sure they're 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 excited. They just had their first 20 win season, regular season. Uh, it's a great step in the right direction, and. Uh, and we, we got to flip that somehow, as I said last night on my radio show, we got to flip that somehow. We're disappointed because he didn't finish as strong as we wanted to in the season. So it's a whole new season now, zero and zero. Let's go see what we can do. John, kind of playing off the last thing that you said, do you have a gauge on where this group is mentally and physically going into Thursday? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we were, we're, we were really down, I mean, after that loss. I mean, we didn't play well, uh, we didn't play smart, we didn't do a lot of things. And, and so, we were down. And uh, I watched the video yesterday, it even made us feel worse. But now we go out and practice and we said, okay, it's done. Put it away and let's move forward. But it is, it is tough. This team has worked so hard all year to try to improve. And the improvements have come so slow for all of them. And it's, it's just something we're just trying to get better in but it is tough. Uh, you know, we've uh, lost 11 games, with the exception of SMU and Ohio State. I think, uh, and, and SMU would certainly be in the tournament. Ohio State would make it in the tournament. That we've lost 11 teams to real, games to really quality teams, and uh, it's a uh, it, we're always fighting an uphill battle, uh, especially ever since we lost our leader back in December. Brandon, with uh, all the conversations that we had about depth and stuff this especially over the second half of this year when you go into a tournament setting like this how do you view you know playing guys 35 36 in a first game when yeah. you gotta win obviously yeah, but yeah. You, get, you might play 24 hours yeah later. I think I, I will just throw it all out the window right now it's win the game you know and then you got to find a way you see that the, the great uh, some great epic stories of teams the one year Connecticut went and won four and went and they won the national championship or something they were they were incredible. You just got to find ways to do that, and uh, we got to go and just win one game, one day at a time. Whatever it takes. You've got four guys, five goes to go in 40 minutes. If that's what it takes, we got to do it. You, you mentioned um, last night the run you had with West Virginia that, mm -hmm. that one year, yeah. uh, and here you, you've only been able to win more than one game once in, in your tenure. Is there anything that you've kind of learned over the years of like kind of what it takes to advance and, and, and make runs in something like this? Oh, I don't know. It is it, in the in the Big Ten. I think it's really been uh, the, the tournament. While it's a great tournament, I think when you're when you're in when you're in that tournament already, if you're in the NCAA tournament already, it is hard to go down there. And you didn't. It, we value the regular season so big, so much, uh, and then you don't win it, and you know you might be in the NCAA tournament. It is it is tough, and you got to just keep your kids focused on trying to win it all, and uh, so. No, I, I think that we've been all we we played we, we've gone down there. Usually played well the first game, the second game we we've, we've lost a couple tight ones. We've lost someone where we're, uh, we got a first round bye, and we lost and and in the second round. But we usually played well the first game. The second game, the team was just better than us. So in that case, is it more advantageous to go down when you're? I don't want to use the word desperate, but there is a kind of sense of desperation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we hope so. I mean, we've you're trying to just go down there and trying to win it all. So I, it's. Uh, if your team's not very good and they're going down in the bottom half of the lake, there's a chance that you're not making it to Saturday night. If your team is really good, they're probably already in the NCAA tournament. The real crown's been done. Uh, you could just, you, 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 it's not, it's just not the same, I think, for some teams. And, and maybe our team is one of them, or we just got a bad matchup for us in those games. Come on over to Chris. With this group of kids, uh, can you pinpoint what it is defensively, is it personnel, is it philosophy? It, we, might you have to change yeah. the philosophy with this? You know, I, I just, I did, you, it's funny you say that. Our, def, our overall defensive field goal percentage is the exact same number it was the year we won the Big Ten Championship. 45-5, which is not a great number, exact same. 
but our offensive is just a little two two percentage. We're talking five or six possessions a game changes that to forty, and we have never been able to get to that that to that area where we are. You know, I think Trey, the final four team was was where they could get down in those low forties, uh, but we've been able to score at such a clip. So. I think some of it is directly personnel. Yeah, I think also it's something is just experience overall. Overall, there's 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 very few freshmen and sophomores that are out there that can make impacts defensively in games, huge impacts in games. It's still too quick. And I know I said that about the freshman class. With our guys right now, that sophomore class is developing, but they are really developing slowly in those areas. So we are we're just talking five possessions. And it's a whole different ball game. So we're we got to try and find a way to find ways to get stops on five possessions. We don't give up as many offensive rebounds as we used to. We shored that up. Our defensive transition numbers have been better, but we're in ISO situations and in post situations we're not very good. And how confident are you that the same group of kids that the same is, is higher than a ten and eight, for example, when the guys who are playing like for next year, even as they continue to mature? Yeah, I, I mean, that's the whole thing. If you, you look at some of the guys that are really making impacts on teams right now, go back and look at their freshman and sophomore stats. And that, that's a huge difference, a huge difference. So we always talk about the freshman stats, the sophomore stats. Yeah, unless the kid is probably be a, 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 on his way to the NBA, uh, those sophomore stats are usually just pretty okay. And so the, our guys got to make those jumps in those areas. And um, so it's... And, and like I said, some of our guys, uh, Ricky Doyle has a whole different stat right now of Karis LeVert who had 70 assists in some 12 games. I mean, Zach's just getting the 70 assists after 30. Th that makes Duncan Robinson's numbers are better when Spike and, Spike and Karis are passing him the ball. It's, it's like having a good catcher in baseball. The pitchers are better.